Another three hours behind us, huh? I feel like I'm trying to break the world's record sitting in one place. How about you? Buy you a cup of coffee? No. No, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll stay on this time. Okay. Try talking to him, now go. He's not getting off this stop. You report in? Talk to the man? Yep. You kill him, that's the same as losing him. We can't let him run, can we? I ain't gonna kill him, I just wanna slow him down a little. Can't be dead. I was aiming low. You followed me all the way from. Yeah, we knew you were going to. Where is he? Come on, fella. Where is he? You gotta tell Phillips. You gotta tell him the guy used his gun. Madrid. Yeah, it says it all, Jack. The guy we want, <laughs> he's in Madrid.
How are you, Ellie? Fine. Let me get you something to drink. Okay. Lunch will be ready in five minutes. Good. What do you say, Jason? It's unbelievable, Sam. They're still at it. Still at what? Another budget cut. Look at that. Oh, my. I'm telling you. Madrid College is slam bang in the middle of the Southwest, right? That's right, Jess. That's Thousands right. of years of Indian culture all around us. A chance for a really crack archaeology department. And what do they do? Well, I have the slightest idea what they Blow it. Oh. They blow the money on a football team that managed to finish last in this division every year. Unbloody believable is what yeah. it is. What's with the helmet here? Found a well. They think it may be one of the original Zuni settlements, Sunitsa. Sunitsa? Yeah, we didn't know what we had till about three days ago. We thought we just found another Zuni ruin with a water hole. So just for the heck of it, I sent a student out to sound the well with a dictometer. It's 100 feet deep. You're going down a 100-foot deep Indian well in that thing? Eventually. <laughs> What's the point? Well, the point is what we might find down there. Well, it's not. Well, I know, but Zunista is at least 1,100 years old, Sam. Yes, I know that. I know. Just consider a kind of story that that well might be able to tell. The Evidence of a civilization down there. Yeah, it was just a risk, though, Jason. You're a digger, not a not a diver. Oh, excuse me, Sam. Hmm? Phone? Oh, yeah. Your dispatcher. Uh-oh. Thanks. Yes, I'm down. Where? Any identification on him? I see. All right, send Rudy out to help Arlo. I'll meet them there. Okay. Yeah, I know. You'd like to stay for lunch, but... Yeah, but um, I have a body. If it's over 500 years old, I'll give you a call. <laughs> Roger A. Phillips, New York City. Thank you. Nothing. Nothing in the phone book either. I'm calling Phillips. Oh, ouch. This is Rennie, Mr. Phillips. You there, Mr. Phillips? I'm waiting for you to tell me what I want to hear, Rennie. Uh, Walters jumped off the bus and he made a run for it. And he had a gun and the next... Is he alive? No, sir. Do we have Arnold Elston? No, sir. Very poor. Mr. Phillips, we think we know where he is. I hope so, Reddy. Find me a suitable house and I'll fly out. Yes, sir. We know the town where he is, but so far we only had time to go through the phone book and like that. It'll take me 45 minutes to alert the plane crew and get to the airport. Ruddy. Yes, Mr. Phillips? Would you care to tell me where I'm to go, or shall we just guess? When robbery got that John Doe killed, I don't know what it was. Well, if his robbery is, watch and ring would be missing. I don't know. His pockets were turned inside out. He heard his flight bag was scattered from here to there. Yeah. Sam, I'll get these prints on the FBI wire and get Pete to develop those photographs. I'll have them for you inside the hour. Okay. Hey, Rimrock is a bus stop, isn't it? You think maybe he got there by bus? Mm. Could be. None of the restaurant people remembered seeing him come up by car. And he hadn't done much walking. His shoes are like brand new. I'll call the bus station and check up on any buses that went through and then follow up on the drivers. Okay? All right, get right on it. Okay, sure, go ahead. Come on in. FBI return on our John Doe, JJ. Oh, good. Hi, Pete, how you doing? How are you? Yeah, we just heard from the bus station through there. Did you talk to Merle? 
Yep. Did you get anything? Well, there was a bus through here, all right, to Phoenix. But they won't know if anybody got off till they get to the next stop and the driver calls in. Corey Walters was his name. He was released from Danbury Prison two, three days ago. Cross-country buses don't make up passenger lists, do they, Arlo? No, they don't, Pete. I, I checked. They don't issue tickets by name at all. Ex-convict travels 2,000 miles to get himself killed at Rimrock. Lab. Yeah, he's here, Sundown. Just a second. Arlo, it's for you. Bus station mm -hmm. on three. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Merle, did your driver get to Phoenix? Who did? Is he still there? Man just walked into the bus station, tried to cash in the unused end of a New York to Madrid ticket. The unused part was from Rimrock to Madrid. Can you identify him? Did you get a license number or description or anything? You're kidding. Okay, Merle. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Where is he? Headed towards State 6. Said we couldn't miss him. The fellow's in a truck with big red letters on the side. It says, see the prehistoric monsters. Pete, tell Sam where we're going. Sure will. Yes, sir. You just drive back from Madrid. Morty. Now, uh, what can I do for you? Been to the bus station, have you? I've been to town. Yes, I've been to town. I guess you tried to cash your bus ticket, didn't you? No, sir. I went there. I went to uh, Madrid to get some grain and fixings for the animals, all I did. Well, so you know Merle Haggerty, clerk at the station, identified you and your truck out there. Mister, I've been in uh, maybe a thousand bus depots in my day. Not once has one of them fellas ever looked me in the eye, much less pay me any mind. I want there. Well, I guess there's only one way to settle it. That's to take us a little ride into town. Think we have to do that, J.J.? I mean... Might we figure out some other way to handle it? I don't know. This fellow ain't leveling with us. I don't see no other way. Yeah, maybe you're right. My name's Arlo Pritchard. I don't think I ask yours. S-double-E-C, -E -C, Oliver T.C. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. C, you know there's a man killed out here today? Uh -huh. We think he might have come in by bus. Could sure help if we knew for sure. There are no charges against you for trying to cash that bus ticket. Fact empty. Fact. The boy Cleon found it. The ticket was uh, from New York to Madrid. I figured that there was a couple of dollars uh, left on it since it wasn't used all the way. Mm -hmm. Where'd Cleon find this? Out back. We heard a couple of shots, and we thought uh, that it was someone uh, sniping rabbits. When Cleon got out there, all he seen was the dead fellow. And? And a ticket. No one else? Nope. Of course, it was a couple of minutes after the shot that uh, Cleon went there. I, I figured a body could uh, shy away from me here before Cleon got out there. Now, the dead fellow's wallet was missing. These pockets were turned out. What can you tell us about that? Nothing. We don't steal. By the time Cleon got back here and I went out to see the dead fellow, his pockets were already empty and his little duffel bag had been dumped out. Whomsoever done the killing, done that too. <clears throat> Say, uh, you figure... Uh, you got to keep that bus ticket? Yes, sir. That's evidence. Mm -hmm. Well, since it was us uh, who found it, I thought maybe... Uh... Oh, Mr. C., how much are these Indian airheads over here? Well, them's only a... Uh, 
20 cents, deputy. Mm-hmm. We got a couple of nephews might like these. Yeah. J.J., what about your sister's boy? Thank you. Uh, you know, we's the one that phoned in the call about the dead fella. We appreciate that, Mr. C. Hey, listen, if you think of anything else that might help, uh, give us a call. Would you do that? Morty? Give me the account book. Come on, come on. This here's a picture of Clean found off by a bush. It's the dead fella. Mm -hmm. Ooh, talk about archaeological duds. Where'd you dig up this relic, Sam? Who's the other unfortunate? Hi, Sam. Hi, Ellie. You're sure you don't recognize him? Nope. The human mind has a fortunate faculty for allowing us to forget the unpleasant. And, Sam, my life before coming to Madrid was unpleasant. Can you stay a few minutes? No, uh, no, I can't, Ellie. I'm sorry. Ellie, take a look at that. Do you recognize this man? No question about it. You look much better with the beard, Jason. Can I, can I fix you some coffee or a cold drink? No, no, thank you. It doesn't make sense. You had your picture taken with him. I mean, I think you'd know him. Oh, come on, Sam. It's his picture, right? It's obviously somebody at a convention or a lecture appearance. If the snapshot meant something to him, fine. It means nothing to me. Why are you asking, Sam? The man's name is Corey Walters. Three days ago, he walked out of Danbury Penitentiary, took a bus to Madrid. Sixty miles before he got here, he was killed. That's too bad. Yeah. Hey, Sam, let me ask you something. Do you think a uh, half-horsepower compressor would run this thing? No. I'm afraid I can't help you. So long, Ellie. Bye-bye, Sam. Stop, Sam. To, to do what, Ellie? He's the first real friend we've had in years. You like him. You trust him. Maybe we could tell him. No. But Jason, he's the law here. No. The law can't help me. Not now. It's over. They've killed Corey Walters. Jason Benedict is already dead in the Crow Magnum man. Yeah. Yes, it is, all right. Of course it is. Plastic. Now look down at the bottom right across from the pointy end there and read what it says. It says made in H O N K O N G. Hong Kong. That's Chinese. We was suckered. Try to be a friend of the fellow and he suckers you. I'm surprised you didn't catch on while she was out there, Arlo. I sure did. Come on, J.J. We both knew what the old guy's doing. Well, you did, did you? Yeah. You knew it was plastic, did you? Well, no, I didn't know that. Then why are you coming on so smart? I'll bet you nickels the donuts he didn't have no store license, neither. What do you make of this statement from the bus driver? All he knows for sure is that two men got off the bus at Rimrock and didn't get back on. That baggage business was interesting, though, wasn't it? Neither fella took anything out of the compartment, but still, there wasn't any extra baggage when the bus got to Phoenix. Traveling was just what they had on their backs, both of them. Except that Corey Walters had this bag, and there's no evidence the other man was carrying anything. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me that Corey Walters was planning a trip the other man wasn't. Or that somebody was following Walters and didn't know he was going to get on that bus. Sam, Ellie Benedict just called from the Zuni tribal office. She said to tell you that Jason is trapped in the Indian well. <laughs> Happened. Jason left before dawn this morning to get the compressor. He wanted to surprise the students. But they arrived about 8.30. And when Jason didn't come up, they began to get worried, and they tried to pull him up. They couldn't. What could he be hooked on down there? 
the Indians pounded stakes into the side to climb down to the water. In drought years, the water level dropped. I right, use the winch on the Jeep, Arlo. Did you get the line free? The winch ready? All set, Sam. Take it up. Everything's all right. Everything is not all right. You killed Corey Walters. You still don't have Arnold Elston. Did you contact my computer center as I asked? Yes, sir. What do they tell you? Well, I got the whole bio on this guy, Elston. I got his uh, schooling. I got his background, his family. I got his blood type, even A positive. And what have you done with all that information? Well, we know he must have changed his name. We checked all the phone directories. Rio Seco, Madrid, Lindero. We drove all the rural routes, looked at all the mailboxes. And the computer had come up with all of Elson's subscriptions, you know, magazines and papers, when he was running the foundation for you. Jack's going to check the post office, see if anyone else... Just one minute, Reddy. I may not be as learned as you two in finding missing persons, but it occurs to me that a man who voluntarily goes underground Goes back roughly to the kind of work he'd been doing before. Am I mistaken? No, sir. But uh, Arnold Elston, he was a chairman of the foundation. I don't know what a high-powered guy like him might be doing in this cow town. He might be... He might be selling shoes ready. But that isn't very likely, is it? Now, what you two have to determine is what is likely. Oh. Before he was working for you, he was a uh, university administrator. And before that, he was a university professor. Doesn't that give you some sort of hint, Rennie? You know, I don't pay you to drive rural routes. I took you on when you were mugging drunks for quarters off 3rd Avenue. I taught you to use your head. This is using your head. Now, you find Elston, and find him fast, or I'll send you back to 3rd Avenue in a matchbox. You know, there's nothing you can do out there, Ellie. Absolutely nothing. What do I do here? Well, I don't want you alone in this house for a while, that's for sure. I'll call my father. Yeah, I'll get somebody to stay here until he arrives, all right? Sam? Yeah? Is it possible that Jason's body may never be recovered? It's possible, but not likely. Ellie, is there any way that you and I can have a little talk? You know, just, just you and me. Talk about what? About Jason, about, about Corey Walters. Uh, maybe rather I come back tomorrow. No, we'll talk now. Okay, fine. You think there's a connection between the death of Jason and that other man's? Isn't there? Jason told us both. He didn't know the man. I know he did, and I don't know why. I mean, he had a mind as sharp as a bayonet. He never forgot anything. It was just a snapshot. Okay, okay. But I am gonna assign a deputy to this house. Why? I've already lost one friend today. That's enough. Is it what you call protective custody? Oh, well, let's, let's just say it's a... It's a precaution. All right. Do you mind if I uh, take this? I'll give it back to you tomorrow. Do I have the right 
to respectfully decline police protection? Yes, you have the right. Then I so move. What are you trying to hide, Ellie? I mean, don't you realize the danger you're in? Don't you realize that I'm trying to keep you alive? I'm going to have Mrs. Davison come here and stay with you for the next two days. I don't care what you say. If you need me, you just... You just call. Out of the easy way. Rudy? Yes, sir. See what kind of prints you can lift off of this. The ones that aren't mine are Jason Benedict's. Sure, get right to it. And uh, put it on the wire as soon as you can for identification, okay? okay. Newspaper called and wanted more details on the Corey Walters killing. I told him not to use his name but to describe him as a trench until we got further into it. Okay? Okay. Why are you checking on Jason's ID? You two were friends for seven or eight years, weren't you? Five. You know, I didn't know him before he came here. He never told me anything I didn't ask. Oh, did anybody check the water temperature of that well? 51 degrees. I expect in water that cold, it'd be three or four days before a body'd surface. Yeah, I suppose so. I sent Arlo out to check all cars carrying New York licenses. Stop by the newspaper and see if anybody knew he'd been asking for big town papers. Yeah. Can I get you a sandwich? No, thank you, Sundown. Have you had lunch? As a matter of fact, I don't remember. Then I'll get you something. Mr. Newcomer, how are you? So, I asked the guy about this archaeological digest. I think we might have got lucky. Three people buy it off the rack here. An Erna Meach, an old lady, says I think we can scratch her. Jason Benedict is a teacher at the college, and a Winston Lacey, a writer, the guy says. I don't know what you're looking to find, Arlo, but uh, that man back there is covering about the same ground. Oh, yeah? How so, Mr. Newcomer? Well, he asked about people who bought the New York papers, too. And he uh, showed me a list of, uh, of magazines and asked if anybody in Madrid bought them regularly. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He seemed real interested in a uh, couple of magazines on archaeology. Archaeology? Mm -hmm. And I gave him the names of a couple of my regulars. What uh, regulars, Mr. Newcomb? Well, there's Erna Meach, and Jason Benedict, and Winston Lacey. Uh, law's coming, Rennie. Did you get those names down? Okay, okay, man. Yeah. So long. Hi. Afternoon. Hi. You're asking Mr. Newcomb about some of our people, were you? Jason Benedict? Uh, yes, I was, Deputy. I work for a magazine publisher back Where? east. You mean, where's the offices of the publisher? Mm-hmm. New York? Yeah, well, I'd like you to come over to the courthouse, please. I was just asking some questions. Yes, sir. You'll be told your rights before any charges are made or any questions asked. Just pulled a gun, took a shot at me in a bookstore. 
Bennett's been asking questions about Jason Benedict. You all right? Yeah. I'm gonna call the coroner. Move these people out of here. All right, folks. Stand back. Back, everybody. Make room. It's a New York driver's license. Hey, he tried to shoot Arlo. Guess you want to see this FBI return. Confirmation on Jason Benedict? Well, his name ain't Benedict. It's Arnold Elson. According to the FBI, he's been dead for five years. <laughs> Now your friend bought himself some back page space. This whole operation is falling to pieces. I don't know what went wrong. Jack was a sharp guy. You're a sharp guy. Choked. I wonder what alerted Elston. There was nothing on the news or in the newspapers about Corey Walters, was there? No, sir. Well, how long has that paper been out? Oh, maybe an hour. What's his name? Your helicopter pilot dropped it off just now. You think, then, that uh, Elston's still alive, huh? Oh, he's alive, all right. After a few days, when they find no body in that well, it'll be very obvious. A man like Elston, all he needs is a few hours to disappear again. So how do we go about finding them? We don't. We find his wife. Yeah, well, how would that affect the possible recovery of the body? Mm -hmm. I see. All right, John, thanks. Well, the Zunis are closing the, the well site. What do you say about the body? Oh, the tribal police will patrol the place a couple of times a day for a while. That's the notebook a New York fellow left in the bookstore with Jason's name on it. Yeah. Apparently, they hadn't caught up with him yet. Still after him. Oh, well, they didn't kill him. Yo. There's a Mr. Brian here from the FBI. Okay, send him in. Sheriff Cade. Right. Mr. Brian. This is my senior deputy, Mr. Jackson. Howdy. Pleasure. Well, I haven't seen you around here. Are you with the uh, local field office, or? No, sir, Tucson. Oh, Tucson, I see. You sent us some prints for identification. Uh, uh, Jason Benedict's. In our files, we have him as Arnold Elston, deceased. Obviously, he's still alive and under an alias. I'd like to talk to him, Sheriff. You do have him in custody. <clears throat> Not exactly. I'm afraid this is really going to mess up your files, Mr. Bryan. He's dead again. He was inspecting one of the old Zunia wells. They haven't recovered his body yet. What happened to him the first time? A boating accident off Long Island. We do have a couple other bodies you might be interested in. Corey Walters and... Corey Walters? He's dead, too? Yeah, Walters and Benedict, they sort of go together like a package, don't they? Sheriff, this entire case is very much under wraps. But off the record, if we're to spend some time together, I might just let a few things drop that might help make heads or tails of it for you. Oh, I'd like that fine. Jason was my friend. Oh, then you know his wife. Ellie? Oh, yes. Do you think she might be cooperative, Sheriff? No. Jason is dead. What happened before we came here is dead past, Mr. Bryan. You were aware that Arnold Elston was important to the Bureau as a material witness. I'm aware that Jason Benedict was a loving, bright, trusting man. Of course, you knew that Corey Walters was in communication with your husband from prison. Do you know why Mr. Walters was on his way to see Mr. E Mr. Benedict? No. Did you know of your husband's business association with Roger Phillips? That was over five years ago. Dad, I'd like you to meet Mr. Bryan oh, and my, my, do, my friend Sam Cade, my Hello. father, Perry Miller. Uh, just getting a few of the kitchen things put away. Uh, nice to meet you both. Excuse me. Mr. Bryan, just what is Jason involved in? I, I mean, just what? Arnold Elston is the head of the uh, Pretorius Foundation. Corey Walters was the controller. Seven years ago, Walters allowed the foundation to fall into financial troubles. 
He went to Phillips for additional funds. My husband didn't know that, didn't know what Phillips was. Apparently not. Anyway, in a few short months, Phillips had most of his own directors on the foundation board. You see, Roger Phillips is the front for the syndicate that specializes in moving in on companies, acquiring the voting control, and then draining them. The man's a cancer sheriff. Sam, you were Jason's friend. He was honest, direct. But we both know he was an educator, not a businessman. He truly did not know what was happening. And as soon as Jason found out about this fraud, he went to Corey and told him to protect himself as best he could. Then Jason went to the FBI. Yes, he did, Sheriff. He had one meeting with the New York Bureau. And then he got a call from Phillips. Corey Walters had told him everything. Phillips promised to kill Jason and me if Jason went back to the FBI, if he did not retract everything he had told to the Bureau. So Jason was caught between Phillips' syndicate and an FBI investigation. Jason arranged the boating accident because of me. A few months ago, Corey Walters volunteered to uh, turn state's evidence on Phillips. He was offered commutation. Unfortunately, the information wasn't detailed enough to uh, nail Phillips. Finally, Corey admitted that he had another source of information. We didn't know that that source was Jason Benedict. And Phillips, or whoever, had him followed. And had him killed. Just as he would have killed Jason, if he were alive. Sure. Benedict had enough information on Phillips to send him away for three lifetimes. The Bureau never had enough to send him to reform school. Or until having a bleeding ulcer becomes a federal offense. We're not going to find Jason's body in that will, are we, Ellie? This is Benedict. A few days from now, those men are going to realize that he's losing himself again in some other Madrid, and it'll start all over again. Is he waiting to hear from you? I can't tell you. I, I have packing to do. I have to help my father. I'm sorry, Sam. Mm. Uh, could you get me to the airport? This is where I came in. Yeah, just a second. I want to make a phone call. Sundown is Sam. I want Arlo out here in the Benedict house when his shift is over half Pete here, okay? I want Ellie Benedict under full time protection. Yes, that's right. What do you do now? Come back here and wait for Benedict to call her? Oh, no, no. I'm not going to wait for anything. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn my county upside down until I find Roger Phillips. Sure, there's no incoming passengers under the name of Phillips. No, I'll call him back. No, no, that wouldn't be the name, Ted. No. But thanks a lot. Madrid hotel clerk said he identified the man Arlo had to shoot. Said him and another fellow stayed there one day and then up and moved out. Any idea where they went? No, but checked all the hotels and motels. I may have something, Sam. One of the real estate agents said he rented a house over in the estates to a man yesterday. Now, the fellow ordered a phone with four lines. Paid a month's rent in cash, but said he only needed the place for a week. Four phone lines. Did you get the name? Smith. How about the address? Yeah, it's on uh, Desert Lane Drive. Run things, JJ. Won't be the first time. Too. The only things in the whole place are some clothes and a shaving kit. And no proof. Phillips is over here. 
Well, the clothes in that closet are handmade. So you uh, check those labels for the tailor's name. And also dust this whole place for fingerprints. I'll get my kit. OK. That somebody got an ulcer? Yeah, somebody has an ulcer. Look, I have a hunch that you'll find Philip's fingerprints all over that. You want to check? Sure. Oh, sundown, Sam. You want me to check in, right? Well, when did you hear? Rudy, Ellie Benedict has been kidnapped. I want you to put your car under cover in case they bring her back here. Marlo? Yes, sir. How did it happen? Well, I never got a look, Sam. I walked in the door looking right down the barrel of a 38, and then some yahoo clipped me from behind. I don't remember nothing else till I woke up here in the phone ring. Who was it? Well, I can't say for sure. Mr. Miller here woke up before I did and answered the phone, I reckon. Mr. Miller? Uh, just someone who wanted to talk to Ellie. Jason? No. No, of course not. Mr. Miller, Jason was going to call your daughter to tell her that he was safe, wasn't he? To tell her where to come. Sheriff, I... Look, the minute or after Jason Benedict ain't playing for nickel chips, Mr. Miller. Now, I know you was talking to somebody on that telephone. Was it Jason? Did those men leave a message for you to give him? I can't tell you, Sheriff. They'll kill her. If you want to see your daughter alive again, mister, you better tell me about that phone call. It was Jason. Where is he? I... I really don't know. I told him that Ellie had been taken, and I told him what they said. That's all. What did they say? His life for hers. They're waiting for him at a place they said he knows. Uh, Sunny or Zun... Zuni Itza? Yeah. I'll get this man a doctor and get out to that Zuni well as soon as you can. All right. Thank you. 
Are you still in one piece? <sighs> yeah. Unit three to unit one. Three to unit one. Come in one. You sure took your time. I see the drowning victims in remarkable condition. Unit one to three. Where you been? We've been trying to raise you for five minutes. Well, uh, I've been in traffic. I wanted you to know you hit it right on the nose. They came back to the house all right. A gunsel named Rennie Lassiter and Mrs. Benedict. I tell her that Jason's back among the living, and uh, I'll get him home in about an hour. I suppose now I'm going to have to thank you. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that, Jason. Wouldn't be in character. <laughs> 